Next topic we're going to work on will be all for extrusion roof here. Oh, we've done enough pitch rules and you know three-way, four-way pitches already. What happens when we want to do something a little bit different or when the rules are no longer straight? You see in the round, right? When you take a bus, sometimes you look at the private housings and all, you see curved rules, okay? Or barrel rules like that. If I want to create, you know, funky roof surfaces that does this, okay? And then, you know, it does this, the, 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 and then like that. We can, we can pretty easily create this part of the work here by clicking on architecture ribbon tab here and look for group by extrusion this one now we're going to try to do this so we click on this and what happens is rabbit will prompt you for a work plane you can think of a work plane to simply explain this to you, you can think of a work plane as a drawing board, a drafting board, like this. Okay, this table here is my work plane, a drawing board. But when we think of work plane situation, is it tends to happen in a very horizontal manner, like a floor plane, you know. Okay, but in this case, we are going to work on this in a vertical manner. So if you think of the work plane as being the wall, stuck on the wall here, and I want to draw stuff on it, think that I will extrude stuff out of it. So the wall plane, the work plane becomes horizontal this way. Alright? So how to do this? We would use the pick a plane function here and click OK. And when you mouse over this, do you now see the areas here highlighted in blue? The areas of the walls here hi highlighted in blue here. We want to use this plate as our drawing board, basically. So now, this, and then it will prompt you, Revit's going to prompt you whether you want to use level 2 or level 1. Actually, in reality, it really doesn't matter. It's the wall that, that I care about, not whether how high or how low. Because I want to draw, I want to do something interesting to it. All right. So, okay, most of the time, it's really difficult to draw this in 3D, in, prop, uh, in 3D here like that. Huh? So, we need it to be in drafting mode. Like in the drafting board, I can see this in an orthogonal manner, like a drafting ruler, like a wall. I can see this. I can see this perpendicularly, like that. Now, with this, I need to open up the elevational view. So, what view is this? Where would you get a clue which elevation should you open? Zip tight. Where is your clue? Now, where is your clue? Where is your clue? If you check out the view cube here, where is your clue? Okay, I'm showing you, I'm sharing with you how to observe so that you know you don't have to guess which elevation it is. Because I'm going to stand here, I want to be drawing this way. Alright, so which elevation must I use? This looks like W. So, we would use the west elevation here all right so if you open up the west elevation you will see this drawing board in auto graphic view all right like that then we can begin to draw like becomes easier all right please please pay attention to this part especially the view plane portion you need to get quite comfortable with this part of the work if not you end up guessing the elevation north, south, east, west and then they, they yield very funny results it's very hard to work on now it's easy, you're only drawing one line later on as we are modelling uh, we are modelling the, the families it becomes a problem and uh, worse, you are modelling the families inside the project that's one of the key challenges there all right. outside the project you know that there are only four views but inside the project sometimes you are blocked by this, blocked by that so problem there. Now once we have this, use this. I'm going to use the spline command and do this. 
Okay, my design concept is about the roof becoming the becoming the ceiling, becoming the floor, etc. Becoming the wall, becoming the floor kind of situation. Now the difference between this particular draw mode, uh, uh, roof by extrusion against all other types of uh, all other types of creation method, sketch creation method is you do not form a closed loop. This is the key element here. It's one line here that's going to become the roof itself. All right. So you see, as I sketch this over, and I'm going to finish the job now. It will normally let you finish the job. Sometimes you cannot. You try. You won't be able to finish it when you have too many of those reference points. And those reference points are too close. Your, your spline curve is just like a 10,000 point thing. Not going to happen. It cannot happen. Okay. And then with this, you go to the 3D view and you check this out. And I want to relate you to this. This one to the areas here. Okay. I want to bring your attention back to this. When you are done, go take a good look at it in 3D. This is your super new funky route that you have created here, like that. But the thing is, it's very shallow. This roof not very, very useful uh, again. You know, remember, they, if I stand here at the balcony like that, when it rains again, when it starts raining again, I need another umbrella. So, no use. What's going to happen is, if you pay attention by selecting the roof here, you look at this. The extrusion start is zero. Where is this zero coming from? Zero is actually zero level of the plane selected here, which is the wall, the drawing board, zero. Extrusion ends at 600 here. It says here 600. It's extruding upwards here, 600. No, that's too shallow. I, I just need it because I need to create something. That's all. So if you see that there are two handles here, I will drag this handle all the way out. And then I will do a conscious comparison. Okay, maybe 2.5 is enough. So I'll just leave it at 2,500 like that. And there you go. That's the roof. That will do the job. In your final year project, some of these commands here I think are going to come in pretty handy should you choose to use Revit to execute the documentation of your project. All right? It's good and useful, especially when you have tough moments like this. You will find that using Revit to document some of these very hard to do angles down here would have been quite useful huh? like that, especially with cutting up sections. This is not a complete section, but at least you would have eased up your workload a lot. All right, when you need to suddenly cut a section, this is three hours of work easily just by drafting. And all you need to do is just add in the hatchings down here, right? Clean up the hatching with proper annotation, with proper material specification and dimensions, you are quite done. So it can be useful. Close this, close the exercise now.